Black women are losing because of this. Black women are losing because of black men not being exclusive in their dating choices. You have to tell your son that. And you need to let him know it's not because of hate. This has nothing to do with hating white women. It has to do with rebuilding the black empire. It's about rebuilding the African world. It's about rebuilding the black community. If black women will not tell their sons that they must be loyal to black women, if your mother, if a mother can't tell a black boy that you should be loyal to black women, then no matter who else tells them that, it will not matter. It got to come from y'all or it can't come from anybody. Okay, now to the question at hand, uh, I'm not sure what it is with my beautiful black sisters, black mothers, but ever since I went on the Breakfast Club interview and had the conversation with my good friend DJ Envy, when he asked me, you know, whether or not I was recommending that he tell his son, well, he, DJ Envy said, I can't tell my son that he can't date white girls. And I said, you better tell him that. I saw that interview. Okay. But since that Breakfast Club interview, so many black mother, to, so many black mothers, to my amazement, to my amazement, so many black women have come forward to express to me that they have a problem telling their black sons that they should only date black women. And I'm just amazed at how so many black women don't feel comfortable doing that, especially given the fact that black women are the ones losing out because black men are not dating black women. So let me ask you, and I know you can only speak for yourself, but this is such a bigger issue why for you, why do you have a problem telling your son to be loyal to black women? I it was I used to, actually. I used to tell him all the time, you know, find a woman that looks like me, a sister, grandma, or something like that. And then what what I think was the big shocker for him is my like I said, he's very close to my younger brother. And my younger brother was dating this beautiful sister, had her own business and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And she actually helped him get his own business started. And he left her. And he married this little mountain girl, this little white girl. <laughs> he married... From a race you, said, you said he married a mountain... Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. You said he married a mountain girl. A what? <laughs> She's from she said he married a mountain girl. Oh, God. Okay. She's their mountain people. Like, I mean, right. I guess if you're from the South, you understand what I mean by mountain people? Yes, I'm familiar. Like, Beverly Hillbillies? Like, that's a real thing down here. Okay. And, like, that's, that's where she's from. And, like, this was a complete 180. Like, how you go from this sister, like, dark-skinned sister beautiful girl to this white girl and I was pissed I didn't want anything to do with this girl I was like you know he's been on and off with this white girl thing all his life and then he gets in this serious relationship with the system we're like okay he done grew out of it he got it out of his system and all of a sudden he's like well she's too ghetto for me and he dumps her so he said the black girl was too ghetto the black so the black woman was too ghetto so he went and got a mountain girl what made him say, say that the black girl was too ghetto, he was at her house one night and she got into a fight with her sister. And he couldn't break them up. He couldn't make her stop. But the mountain... And he, he broke up with her after that. The mountain girl is probably more ghetto than the sister. Those mountain folks, them hillbillies is worse than the hood people. They worse. So that was an excuse but as far as I'm concerned. He got with, like I said, he got with this girl and like I was so against it. But, and that, you know, not to take anything away from her, she's not a, she's not a terrible person. She's a, but I would, I would have, if I could choose my brother's mate, I would have decided, I would have chosen for him to work it out with the sister he was with. But, you know, that was his decision. That's a grown man. But, like. 
But let me get back to my question for you, though. Why? Okay. I felt like I couldn't pull my son away from that. But, okay. But that, okay. No, you don't have to. You don't have to ruin the relationship with the uncle. Okay, let's say her and the aunt has a white husband, and none of my sisters are married to white men. Thank God. But let's say the aunt has a white husband. She can still hang out with the aunt. But guess what? I'm going to make sure my sister understands that the only lesson you give in my child, as it relates to dating, is she will date black men. And if you cannot reinforce that, don't even bring up dating. That's something y'all will not discuss. I will handle that myself. That's what I will be telling my sister. Okay? You can mentor her in any other, you know, being a lady, business, education. But when it comes to dating, because you made a political mistake against the race, because you made a political mistake against the race, you can't give my daughter no dating advice because you are with a mountain man. So since you dating ice people, okay, and I only want my daughter dating sun people, you don't give out no advice. And I would let my daughter know over and over what it is we stand for. But my question to you, you seem a little ambivalent. Well, you said you used to tell your son to be to only date black girls, but then you stopped. Why did you stop giving him that principle to live by? I guess, like, I guess one of the biggest my family respects the elders in the family. And now that she's married to my brother, she is uh, like she's an aunt. She's an aunt. So it's like, you got to respect her. So I don't want him to like come out his mouth wrong at her. Like, you know, mom, should be married anyway. Like, I don't want him to do it. Like, not that I think he would, but I don't, I don't want to disrespect her. Or I don't want him to disrespect her. But it's not but disrespect. Time, it's not disrespect. But it's not disrespectful. Those are the principles. Listen, Jewish people don't invite black people to the synagogue. Ever. Ever. It's not disrespectful. They are just for themselves. So we got this. We got one of the biggest problems we have to get over with. This is our New Year's resolution. Black people have to get more comfortable being unapologetically African. We have to stop feeling that it's wrong to be totally and exclusively dedicated to ourselves. And the reason why we got to change this is our whole resurrection depends upon this mental shift. Uh, we will get nowhere economically, financially, spiritually, socially, we will get nowhere until we change this sick mindset that slavery gave us. We got this from slavery of having to approve of everybody else, even when it's within our, even when it's not in our own best interest. Black women are losing because of this. Black women are losing because of black men not being exclusive in their dating choices you have to tell your son that and you need to let him know it's not because of hate this has nothing to do with hating white women it has to do with rebuilding the black empire it's about rebuilding the african world it's about rebuilding the black community if black women will not tell their sons that they must be loyal to black women if your mother, if a mother can't tell a black boy that you should be loyal to black women, then no matter who else tells them that, it will not matter. It got to come from y'all or it can't come from anybody. I got a question on that, Doc. Hold on, hold on. Let me let, hold on. Let me finish with the queen first. What are your thoughts on that, sister? <laughs> I mean, I agree with you. Um, my like I said, my biggest concern, my biggest concern is. I guess because I'm so family oriented and it's it's a lot. <laughs> Race mixing is a lot in my family. I have a lot of Oh, I see what you're saying. Cousins. So this ain't I, okay, okay, okay. I have a lot of male okay. cousins and, and whatnot that have dated or married white women and Asian women. And like I don't wanna keep my son because I don't wanna keep my son away from everybody. You don't have to keep him away from nobody. Listen. <laughs> 
You don't have to keep him away from nobody. He can still go around his white aunts with their white husbands, and he could go around his black uncles with their white wives. He can still be around everybody. He just knows that that ain't the way I'm going to be living my life. That's all. He ain't got to talk about it. He ain't got to debate it. He ain't got to defend it. It doesn't even have to be discussed. He simply knows that you are raising him with a code of honor that they were not raised with. That's all. It doesn't have to be a conversation. So when these little white girl crushes come home, I need the dead daddy immediately. Yes. Yes. You can tell him. You can be friends with him. And of course, we know you can't have white friends, but he's not there yet. But they can be, you can, you can socialize with them. You can associate with them. Okay. Nothing's wrong with that. But you ain't dating them. We don't do that in here. You will only date black women. Dr. Uma, I have a quick question. Go ahead. Okay. I'm from Chicago. My son, he's 14 years old. He just started high school. So you've been around black girls all this time. And my worst fear has come to fruition. This little white girl that goes to his school is like maybe five percent white. White girl goes to school, not the only white girl. I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> his dad, his dad is Muslim, so I'm telling him like we don't live together. He just, he was he been incarcerated my whole son life, just until this year. He just got out of prison, so he's trying to adapt. I'm coming to him. I'm like, look, you need to tell your son that he cannot date, because I'm telling him he can't. I'm like, you can't date her. He's like, Mom, why? What's wrong? Why, is this, why does her skin color matter? I'm like, look, I'm not trying to sound racist. Because now he's learned about this race, races. Um, they teach him about racism and all this other stuff. And, you know, all this stuff in the news. And so now he's calling me a racist. I'm like, Jay, I'm not a racist. But I just feel like they're teaching us that we're racist. They're well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, back up. You said he asked you. Why can he date the white girl? What did you tell him? No, he said, Mom, why does her color matter? And what did you tell him? You got to answer that. He asked you I a said, good question. I'm not saying that, um, I, I'm just saying for him, I said, Jay, I feel like for you, um, black, only the black girl is going to understand you because you're a black boy. And I said, I just don't agree with you dating somebody outside of your race and he's like mom why does your color matter i'm like so it's like i'm like i'm not trying to sound racist he said mom you sound racist though i'm like oh my god well, wait 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 dude. i'm still and not clear says, he'll go out of it ain't nothing wrong with a little um what he can't cop ain't nothing wrong with a little marshmallow or something he said like he'll go out of it it'll it, just be a face but I'm, I'm scared it's not a face because my son is different even though he's I mean, I mean, I grew up in Chicago. I'm not, I'm not posh, but I'm not, you know, I'm not from the hood. I'm not in between. So, you know, he, he, um, he grew up around the whole family. Like, we're mostly for all black. So it's just like, why did my son, out of all people, I mean, I don't even know how this even happened. So I don't even know what to do. But your an I don't think your answer was sufficient. When he asked you why does color matter, you said, I'm not trying to be racist. That means you went on the defensive. That shouldn't have been the answer, I'm not trying to be racist. You don't have to try to be racist. You can't be racist. Racism is a group system. Racism is a group system that is created by a group implemented by the entire group who has systematic and economic advantage over another people's opportunities. The only way you can be racist against white folk is if you exercise some degree of control over economics and the political reality of white folk. Yeah, that's somebody who need to mute their phone. Somebody got the wind blowing. But if you don't control opportunities... If you don't control wealth, if you don't control institutions, how can you be ra to be racist? You have to be able to exercise power to be racist. You have to be able to exercise power systematically against another community. You can't be racist as one person. There's no such thing as a one person well, what's racist. A, what's a good response to tell my son? Because every day I'm keeping, I'm keeping laws about when he's seeing his girl what they talking about because I don't want him to be with her. I don't want him to, I mean. Then tell him that. Tell him that.
I would have no problem telling my daughter, you're not dating any white boys. We don't do that. And then I'm going to explain to her why. Okay? And that's what you have to do with him. You got to make sure he looks at the history to understand what they have been, what we have been through at their hands. You need to make sure he understands the rules of racism, which includes that all white people at the end of the day are going to support the agenda of their people, whether or not they love you. Personal relationships with white folk have nothing to do with their political commitment to their community. You got to let him know how are we going to rebuild the black community without strong black families and you can't build a strong black family without a black woman. You, you systematically sit down, write it down on paper. You brainstorm everything you need to tell him. You make it a lesson. You make it a lesson and make sure he understands it has absolutely nothing to do with, with hatred. This is not about hating white folks. It's about protecting, honoring, and building black people. You don't have to hate them not to date them. You don't have to date them not to marry them. You ain't got to hate them to build your own community. That little part, it doesn't help that some of our, our family is mixed, so it's. I'm just but that shouldn't listen. I'm take that but listen, that shouldn't be a problem either. Why? Okay, I have biracial people in my family, they are black, and guess what? They need to hear it too, so you can remind them that right. they're black. Because the minute the biracial says, Well, you know, I'm half white, show me a white person that considers you half white. Show me a single white person who considers you half white. There's no such thing as being half we white. Talk about all the time. The white person not gonna call you white. Never. Call you black. Exactly. Call you black too. We have to become unapologetic, y'all. I need y'all to understand how important it is to become un. If our children see us hesitant, if our children see us scared, if our children see us ambivalent, if our children see that we don't have confidence in standing on this, why would they believe it? Why would the, the listen? The Jewish culture, they listen. Yeah, but hold on. Let me say this. Let me say this. I'm going to come to you. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. The Jew I, I'm going to come right to you. The Jewish parents let their children know you will work. You will never work for a black person. They tell them this. They tell them. Everybody is unapologetic about their culture's agenda except us. We still hung up on this Christian, Islamic, Judaism theos theology and ethos that says we got to embrace every that's why we last you're not going to win this holding hands with the people who pushing you down if the black woman doesn't tell his son exactly you listen we need all the help we can get you ain't got time to be worrying about how your enemy feels about what you telling your children we ain't got that luxury do you know how many white folks you're going to have to piss off before we fix our problem? You're going to have to piss a lot of people off before we fix this. This was built over 400 years. August 21st, 2019, 400 years under Anglo-Saxon British North American rule. August 21st, 1619 to August 21st, 2019, 400 years hundred years after 400 years if we can't tell black boys that you better be loyal to black women we are going nowhere we might as well dig the ditches make our own coffins and get in them right now because if the black boy doesn't know he got an obligation to the black woman if he don't know that his purpose for being on this planet is to build with a queen we are done it's over it's over but let me go back to the queen. Go ahead, sister, because you had a follow-up. The other, the other part of my, my issue was, like I said, other than the whole race-mixing thing, the other issue in my family is colorism. And like I said, I, I don't know where I should stand on that because I am very, very light-skinned. And my husband's friend, like I said, he, I'm his second wife. And, of course, his, his divorce had nothing to do with... Um, his first wife's complexion, it was another issue altogether. But um, his friends always make the joke that he upgraded. And they've made this joke in front of my son. Oh, wow. And I. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, time out, like, time, out time out, time out, time out, time out. Did I just hear you say that your brother's 
or somebody made a joke in front of your son that he upgraded from a black woman to a white woman in front of your son? No, 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 no. I said my husband. I'm my husband's second wife. I got you. His first wife was dark. Got you. Okay. Second wife was black. Okay. Third wife was white. Okay. Got you. His friend have made the joke to him. Ah, he upgraded from son. the dark wife to the light skinned wife. To me. And he's made that statement in front of your son. What did you say when he made that statement in front of your son? What did you say when he made that statement? Go ahead. What did my husband say? No, no, no. What did you say? When when your husband's friend told him he upgraded from his chocolate ex-wife to his light-skinned new wife, what did you say when they said that in front of your son? What did you say? I said our complexion had nothing to do with it. How is that an upgrade? Okay, but here's what you got to understand. How do you know your complexion had nothing to do with your husband selecting you? Uh -oh. I asked him. Because you asked him. I asked him. Okay, well, let me tell you something. <laughs> From a psychological perspective, people don't always tell the truth. Here's what I'm telling you, and I'm not trying to insinuate at all that he only married you because you were light-skinned. I'm saying that you being light may have been a factor in his decision-making. But here's my biggest concern. The reason I asked you that is you got to make sure your husband does not practice light-skinned supremacy. Because if your husband is a light-skinned supremacist, he will teach that to your son. See, I want to make sure daddy ain't infecting the son with that whole light skin supremacy mindset. That's the, or because that, it don't matter what his uncles do. His uncles could have white women, chocolate women. It don't matter. If his dad is sending him verbal or nonverbal messages that light skin is better than brown skin or black skin, then you need your intervention to be at home. Forget the relatives, forget the extended family. The husband is the problem. Are you following me okay. on that? And like I say, he's never said it, but I told him it's not cool that when your friends make that joke that you laugh. See, he's laughing. Like if he's laughing at the joke, you know what he should have said? That, yeah, that's what dad did. You, he, listen. You know, you know what he, he should have said? Dark-skinned lady and found him a light-skinned lady. That, see, he laughing at the joke. That means he light believes. Light skin is the next best thing to having a white woman, and I don't, I don't want to be a part of that. Like I'm like, you know, don't, don't act like I'm some kind of trophy that you won or something. I see what you're saying. Well, it's too late for that. Y'all married. Y'all got a son, and I'm sure that's not the only reason why he did it. I'm sure he <laughs> loves you. You understand? But, 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 you got to crack down on that. Because listen, I've dated fair-skinned women. I've dated sisters of every color. I don't have a skin tone preference at all. Okay, in fact, in my own personal story, I've shared with people how for a long time, I always said I was going to have to marry a chocolate sister because in being in the school, I see how poorly treated black girls are and in society, how p poorly treated dark skinned sisters are. So I said, since so many black scholars, uh, conscious community scholars, as well as mainstream black scholars, if you look at our scholars, most of them have light women. Very few scholars, hoteps and mainstream, very few of them have chocolate women. And all of them will claim that that's a coincidence. And I will say as a psychologist, that's bullshit. Okay, you're not going to tell me that 99% of all black scholars got light-skinned women by accident. That's a lie. Okay, so for me, I said, I'm going to have to marry a chocolate woman because somebody has to validate chocolate sisters. And then only recently I began to back off of that because coming from a spiritual perspective, it could very well be the case that my ancestors desire me to be with a light-skinned woman. It might be a light-skinned woman who's the one who's to help me build what I need to build. So I have to I had to check my own self. I had to check my own self because by saying I will only date a dark skinned woman or only marry one, then I was practicing the opposite of light skin supremacy, which is black skin supremacy, which is no better. Which somebody who says I'm only going to date dark is no better than somebody who says I'm only going to date light. So I had to check myself. And saying, if you do that, you're no better than the people you're talking about because now you're discriminating against light-skinned sisters for being light. And that's not fair either. So I had to reevaluate that so I don't risk cutting out the woman who is for me, okay, just because she's light. 
You see, so what we got to do is we got to get over the whole light skin supremacy, dark skin supremacy, colorism spectrum. That should not be a part of our mindset, but it is because the white man gave it to us. It is part of post traumatic slavery disease. And, and we also have to be clear, the reason why it is so entrenched on top of self-hatred is the fact that in America, and especially in the Caribbean, and especially in Africa, America too, but especially in the Caribbean, and especially in Africa, the whole society was based on the amount of melanin in your skin. So in America during slavery, you know, they did have their little mulattoes and they had, you know, their light skin, but it was not as systematically encoded as in the Caribbean or in Africa, where if you was one half shade lighter, that was the difference between getting into college or not. That was the difference between a good job or not. And I can tell you even today, even today, after slavery and colonialism, light skin supremacy is still very much a part of the Caribbean reality. I've traveled extensively through the Caribbean. It's very much a part of Caribbean reality. It's very much a part of African reality. And it's still a part of light skin reality too. We need to cut that shit out. The next generation of black children should not be raised with any, any, any type of semblance being attributed to attaching value with skin shade. A person's value should have nothing to do with the shade of melanin. That is absolutely sick, and that is nothing but a psychological residual of slavery. When a light skin person, how do you combat that? At, at, you you speak out against it. See, like white people that say, you know, I, I don't want to benefit from, you know, white supremacy. It's, it's almost the same thing with a light skin person. Like, I don't want to benefit from that. So you, how do you combat it? Well, here's the thing. You can't necessarily control all the opportunities in life where it may benefit you, but you will definitely be able to be more conscious of opportunities where it works against darker skinned Africans. In other words, you have an obligation as a lighter skinned sister to expose the light skin supremacy wherever you find it. When you hear somebody say, oh, that child is so beautiful because they're light or have green eyes or hazel eyes and ignore the dark skinned kid standing right next to him, then you have reinforced it. You have to expose it all the time you see it. And guess what, Queen? You're gonna have a you're gonna have to you're gonna be you're gonna have to work harder than me. Guess why? Because you're gonna be around it more because you're the privileged group. See the privileged group is exposed to the racist and discriminatory behavior more than the targeted group. White people hear the N-word more than black people will ever hear it. White people hear the N-word more than black people will ever hear it because they are the in-group. And just as with them, light-skinned black people will hear the dark-skinned jokes way more than a dark-skinned person because you're in the in-group. So you're going to have to fight more than a dark skinned person. Why? Because a light skinned person is going to be real careful about what they say about dark skinned people around dark skinned people. But because you are light, they will feel more comfortable saying it around you because they're going to assume that you have the same type of psychological sickness as they have. So a light skinned person, and I commend you. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you guys know you have other people that have questions and after I say this, but that... You're, you're right with that, because when my son was younger, um, one of my mom's friends, who was an older, darker-skinned lady, um, was commenting on how beautiful my son was, because my son is my complexion. Uh -huh. And um, she said, she asked who his father was, like, I don't know why, why that was any of her business, but I told her, you know, the, the guy that you just saw me with, that's his dad. And she was like, oh, you're so lucky. I said, why do you say that? She said, because he took after you. Because my son has red hair and light eyes, and I was—I told her I was like, actually, the hair and the eyes came from him. Like that's a trait in his family, not mine. Like the only thing he got from me was complexion. And she was like, well, you're lucky that your child came out looking like that instead of looking like his dad. And she, like, I could tell she wasn't trying to be hurtful. She honestly felt like I was lucky that my son was light skinned with light eyes and red hair. And that's the sickness. So, I mean, that's the worst kind of that's sickness. I never wanted my son to hear anybody say. 
that he was lucky that he looks like that. And that's why you're... Luckily, I don't, I don't think that anybody's ever said it in front of him, but I've heard, I've had plenty of people tell me that I'm lucky that my son looks like that. And that's why you have to teach him right. You follow me? Because nobody can stop Yes, sir. colorism better than a light-skinned African. Just like nobody can stop racism better than white folk, but they never going to stop it because they benefit from it. But nobody can stop. For example, I have six degrees, right? A doctorate. There's a mindset that says educated people's opinions are more important than uneducated people. So guess what? I'm one of those brothers who have to constantly remind people that you will not ignore that brother's opinion because he don't have a doctorate from a white university. Just because I have a doctorate from a white university does not make my opinion more important than his. And because I have that degree, other educated black people will feel more comfortable talking down about so-called uneducated black people because they don't around me because I have the degree. So the assumption is what? You're comfortable with the comments because you benefit from the privilege. You're comfortable with the comments because you benefit from the privilege. That's going to be the uh, that's going to be the uh, assumption, and that's why you're going to have to fight hard. Your son is going to have to fight hard when it comes to light skin supremacy. I got to fight hard when it comes to educated bougie blacks looking down on black folks who don't have doctor degrees. We all have to do our part to fight where we are. Well, thank you so much for hearing me out, Dr. Moore. No problem, no problem.